Just over two years ago, Justin Welby, the Archbishop of Canterbury, was quoted as saying that he wanted to compete Wanga out of existence. There have since been major upheavals, regulation, and some positive initiatives in the credit industry. And I am very honored to be joined today by His Grace to discuss his important work in this area. Your Grace, nice to see you. Thank you very much for taking time and making the time in your busy schedule to talk with us. I'd like to ask you about uh, the uh, comments you made a couple of years ago in 2013, where you said that you would like to um, not so much legislate Wanga out of existence, but try to compete them out of existence. They quoted you rather more aggressively than that. Your comments, I thought, were quite benign and friendly, <laughs> and you, you said that the Wanga gentleman was, uh, was a businessman and took it very well, but they made it more aggressive than it was, and they made it almost an attack on payday lending, which uh, I don't think was your intention. It was a very friendly comment. How, how did you view that reporting at the time? I think it's really important to say that I did, do, did and do feel very strongly about the way that many of the payday lenders were operating. You know, it's, this is an unacceptable form of business practice. You can't legislate bad practice out of existence in the financial markets. It just shifts, it shape shifts very quickly. If you legislate, people find their way around the legislation, but people can't get round effective competition. Now competition isn't always head on, it may be finding new markets that replace a malignant form of market with a benign form of market. It was just a comment, an accidental comment that seemed to press the right button at the right moment and from my point of view in the, in the grace of God people picked it up in local communities and ran with it. And it's actually had quite a big effect. I would love to say that I'd worked that out, but it was purely accidental. What do you envisage as further initiatives? And, and may I ask, I mean, have you ever been in such a situation facing a desperate need for a loan or anyone you know? Do you have a personal oh, experience? Oh, yes. Oh, it? absolutely. Um, as a teenager, I remember my father buying some very cheap suitcases from Marks and Sparks and packing them up late one night and we slipped out of the flat we were living in because he couldn't afford to pay the rent. <laughs> so moonlight flit. So I remember that's one of the, that was a shaping memory of my time uh, growing up. And secondly, um, uh, quite soon after we married, we just, you know, typical young marriage, we just hadn't budgeted properly and we couldn't see how to pay the bills. And so I'm very aware of the huge pressure it puts on you, I mean, you'd know that, we all know that. Most young couples have done that at some point. Um, in terms of initiative, future initiatives, I remain sufficiently a market person to feel that we have to see what emerges. The market is often a good way, uh, is often clever at finding initiatives that meet a particular need. But I think particular things are about uh, we need sustainable community finance in terms of very small micro-level quasi-equity products that enable people to start small businesses, micro-business, with less risk. If you're starting a very small business, we all know they have a very high failure rate, you actually need to find ways of lessening that risk, and that means some kind of quasi-equity product. And, and there are areas like this that will help some of our most deprived areas find new economic life. Is there a place for payday lenders now that they've been capped and the rest? Frankly, I doubt it, not at the interest rates they were charging. There's a place for short-term, easily accessible loans, but on re more reasonable terms. I think there is uh, a place for um, regulation, but regulation doesn't solve anything. I said recently in something I was doing, the trouble with regulation, the only, it, it slams the stable door after the horse has gone. The only horses you find are the ones that are so dopey, they never realize the stable door. It, it, it finds said. a way yeah. around it. Yeah. Yeah. The main changes, drivers of change are culture, um, 
convention, condemnation by society, you know, this is a really bad way to behave, right. has more effect. Some of the big banks employ 200,000 people and might have 150 regulators. Yeah. You know, they're never going to know what's going on. How do, how do you take all these valuable initiatives out beyond the church community? There are plenty of people in this country that don't go near a church. How do you reach oh, them? The Church of England has, if I can put it in crude commercial terms, the best branch network on the face of the planet. We, are, we have 15,000 branches in England. Parishes, they're called. Yes. They're worshipping communities. And uh, they are in every single community. Now, it doesn't mean you reach everyone, but through the year, we reach a significant proportion. I think the most recent um, research shows that about 30% of the population will have contact with the church at some time during the year. And when you do something good, in most parishes, word of mouth spreads incredibly quickly. The trick is how to put fairness into the process. In, oh. in our campaign for fair finances, yes, fairmoney.com comparison, our new comparison website, we're trying to instill fairness in all the processes. How do you keep fairness in there? How do you keep the principles of the church in there? I think if, we, if I could crack that straight away, then you know, I'd be running quite a large chunk of this country, I suspect. I think, I think there, are no, there isn't a single magic wand. I think the work you're doing um, is really special because it puts pressure on the institutions. So part of it is changing culture. Part of it is things like comparison websites that are not skewed towards anyone but are genuinely fair. Um, I think part of it is also about local community. The biggest loss we've had over the last half century or so has been the loss of local communities. And fairness also comes through people, through the asymmetries of power between borrower and lender, retail borrower and wholesale lender. It's a very unequal relationship. Totally. But you have, if the retail borrower has someone who helps them think things through if they're not used to doing it, or has a basis of information that enables them to reflect more carefully before they make a decision, it's amazing how you change the balance of power and you can much more easily enforce fairness. That's from the point of view of advising the consumer, which you and the Church uh, Credit Champions Network seem to be rolling out. And so also your kind of website. Well, carrot and stick. The carrot... How so? The carrot has to be... I mean, it's one of the things we were trying to push on the um, Banking Standards Commission was that better culture and behavior should lead to less onerous regulation and uh, capital requirement. Because right. if you're behaving better, you should be considered right. lower risk. And did that work? Uh, there was a certain amount of pushback from certain areas, shall we say. Yeah. The stick is the reverse. That people, uh, that websites um, uh, who misbehave in that way should be named and shamed. But Lenders who participate in these things because it is increasing the risk profile of the business, it makes their business more volatile, should find themselves with higher capital requirements and regulators breathing more heavily down their neck. This is much more selective, intelligent regulation, not just blanket regulation. Your task force winds up in December, I believe. Yep. What are you going to do to continue it, to continue your legacy, and are we going to see Archbishop Welby carrying on initiatives like this, which only I think you can do uniquely again because of your financial background. Uh, this was an initial wave of emotion. It's now got to be focused down and we've got to say, what can we achieve? And that's what we're working on. And we will need someone to take over from Hector Sanz who will be an effective, uh, innovative, entrepreneurial developer that will help the existing credit unions, other uh, community finance organizations develop. Thank you so much.